Brad, is it easy to sum up the, the Papua New Guinea rugby league experience? It was just an amazing, amazing experience. It's a total eye opener. Being your first test, you're already excited. But when you walk out onto that ground, what were you thinking? The place, when you look at like sports, you look at say the English soccer when they've got that sort of vibrant sort of atmosphere. When you go there, it was just banging. The whole place was just, they were yelling, they were that excited. They're more excited to see the Australian players than anything. And we had Big Mel on the tour and they just absolutely love Big Mel. And when you run out there and just, you know, it's like a jungle setting, you know, the, around the outside, it's, it's quite intimidating and scary, but that just made it all, all the more sort of exciting. I think they posted that crowd for your festival in Garoka at 13,000, but you look at the shots, it would appear, well, maybe there was 13,000 plus another 5,000 around the fences <laughs> and trees. There was another five in the trees. You look up in the trees and you've got these beautiful big, I think they're oak trees or something, and you look up and there's just like, they're littered with people just hanging off from the highest limbs or, you know, down to the lowest shrubs, just having a look over the top of the fences. Really like, they just do anything possible to go and watch a game. Kick off. And the first test is underway. And guess who it is? Glenn Lesbeth taking up a big charge. Button Bella once again. Oh, and he's charged through. What about the players, the, your opponents, the Kumas? How keen, how willing out in the match? Yeah, they're willing. And there's a lot of pride. They have a lot of pride too, you know. Um, especially playing at home in front of big crowds. And, you know, they just adore the Australian team. And you, know, you don't go out there, you don't play without getting many scratches or you know, you're always getting head butted, scratch, punch, kick, something. But um, as soon as the whistle's over, they're straight up and they want a photo and a cuddle and, you know, they're just, you know, they're wrapped to play. It would seem from the vision that the Australians didn't take them lightly either. I mean, players like Ian Roberts got pretty fired up. Oh, yeah. No, you had to, yeah. Out of all the times you're playing, they never change. Their attitude doesn't change. They rip in as hard as they can. And a couple of times when you sort of stand back a bit and hold back and think skill's going to work, it doesn't work and they, they get the better of you. Yeah, Australia looming once again. Robert Dummies. And Clyde. He's over. This time it's Brad Fittler for Australia. Stick. Stick. Now your first test in uh, PNG. Also your first try. Big moment. You scored over 100, but you didn't have to do a whole lot to get your first test try. No. Nah. Um, mate, you still had to put your head in there. <laughs> I'm telling you. You had to run onto it, but no, nah, very soft. It was only, I didn't have to run far, which is a good thing. Pre-match entertainment. We just had a look at it on uh, Boots and All. Do you remember anything about these blokes with these giant heads? <laughs> I remember just, all I remember was going out just looking around, just going, whoa, what have we got ourselves into here? So, no, but it was good. So you didn't get any of these blokes as, no, in the case anything. of Cliff Lyons, a bloke with a head about eight times too big coming up and shaking Cliff Lyons' hand before the game. I don't know that, but I'm sure Cliff does.